Hi, in this video, we'll be talking about the intermediate filament and we would have a bird's eye view on the intermediate filament and their assembly and their structure as well. If we talk about the cytoskeletal elements of a cell, we would find actin based microfilaments, microtubules, and we have third type, which is intermediate filaments. Intermediate filaments are mostly found in tissues which undergoes a lot of mechanical stress. Like our skin, which undergoes mechanical stress, but thanks to these intermediate filaments, which protects our skin from any kind of mechanical stress or damage. Imagine you're doing a pull up in the morning or stretching your legs. Your skin is facing a lot of stretch forces, right? Now, if these intermediate filaments are not there, the stretch force would create breakage in the epithelial layer and that would be detrimental for your skin, right? But thanks to these intermediate filaments, which prevents any kind of cellular di distortion upon stretching forces or any kind of mechanical perturbation. Now, unlike actin microfilaments or microtubules, these uh, intermediate filaments has some unique property. First, we talk about their sizes. Actin microfilaments are 7 nanometers, whereas microtubules are 24 nanometers in diameter. And in somewhere in between comes the intermediate filaments, 10 nanometer in diameter. We would talk about its structure, but let's talk about the classification of intermediate filaments. So, intermediate filaments are very much resistant to high salt concentration or detergents. And that is the way we purify these intermediate filaments. We put high salt concentration and detergents, which degrades the actin microfilaments or microtubules, but keep the intermediate filaments intact. So they are very stable in nature. Yet, we would understand at the end of this video, they are also very much dynamic. So intermediate filaments is divided into broad categories. You have type 1 and type 2 acidic and basic keratins. These are mostly found in nails, hair, glabrous skin, and collectively it is known as cytokeratin. There is type 3, which is again a diverse class, which has desmin, which helps our muscle to contract, and it's found in muscle, and also GFAP, which are found in astrocytes. The type 4 is a class of neurofilaments which regulates neuronal physiology. Then the type 5 is most popular and most common, the nuclear lamins. And the type 6 includes nesting, which is found in radial glial progenitors of the developing brain. Now, lamins are found just beneath the nuclear membrane. Lamin work like a structural support underneath the membrane on which the membrane is positioned. Now, lamin has a common structure. It has a N-terminal alpha helical domain, then a nuclear localization signal, and then several Ig folds. And there are three types of lamin, lamin A, B, and C, and they are present in the inner side of the inner leaflet of the membrane, nuclear membrane, and help the nucleus to stay in structure. And when a cell is undergoing any kind of mechanical shear or any force, it ensures that the nuclear is not changing its shape or nothing major happened to the nucleus. But this stability is also a drawback for the cell because when the cell needs to divide, it has to disintegrate its nucleus and replicates its genomic material. So disintegration of the nucleus happens in prophase and that happens by phosphorylation of this lamin which destabilize them and thereby the nucleus gets dissolved. The second class is the, micro, the microfilaments present in the uh, neurons. They are known as neurofilaments and they are categorized as neurofilament L, M and H. Neurofilament L, M and H, this nomenclature is based on their molecular weight, L for light, H for heavy. So, these neurofilaments inside the neuronal axon 
helps in axonal growth, the radial growth of the axon. Now imagine this is the diameter of the axon and if the diameter of the axon is changed, the impulse conduction velocity would be also changing, right? So overall, these neurofilaments has a broad spectrum role on neuronal physiology. Then we find the intermediate filam filaments in all over our epithelial cells and also we find specific intermediate filament proteins in the glial cells especially the astrocytes this is called glial fibrillary acetic protein or gfap which is widely used as a astrocyte marker which is nothing but uh, intermediate filament keratins are most diverse classes among the microfilament and there are like hard keratin which is present in our hair nails and glabrous skin there are cytokeratin which are present in our dermis epidermis cells which gives also mechanical support to the skin now unlike microtubule and actin based microfilament we don't have a globular subunit in case of the intermediate filament the basic subunit, the fundamental subunit for intermediate filament is a rod-like structure with its N-terminus and C-terminus and the, in between there is a long stretch of alpha helix. For simplicity, we describe it like this. And let us describe how the intermediate filament is made up of. So first, these, these intermediate filament subunits assemble in format of our timer. And they coil it on each other and form a dimer. Now these dimers form a staggered tetramer. And this staggered tetramer can assemble to each other on side by side like a necklace and forming a rope-like structure. And this is how eight of these such tetramers assemble to form the cable or the rope-like structure, which is an intermediate filament. Now intermediate filament gives the cell stability mechanical support and they are very much stable and you have seen that they are resistant to detergent and high salt concentration but yet they are very dynamic because whenever a scientist has put labeled intermediate filament protein uh, subunits inside a cell in a, inside a fibroblast after two hours what they found is several intermediate filaments are labeled with that uh, fluorescently labeled IF subunits that means intermediate filaments though they are very stable they are also turning over right and they are dynamic in nature now intermediate filament just like we saw in case of the microtubules there are microtubule associated proteins which governs the stability of the microtubules there are certain intermediate filament associated protein known as ifaps but these proteins are not well characterized and till date there are only few proteins which are known and they are yet to be discovered. These protein crosslinks the intermediate filament to each other or crosslinks them to the actin cytoskeleton. So one such protein is plaquins. So this crosslink the intermediate filament to a microfilament and that is how even providing more structural uh, support. Then there are desmins, which are intermediate fil filaments found in muscle fibers. And desmins connect sarcomere with the Z disc and also hold mitochondria and nucleus in position inside a muscle, inside a contractile mu muscle. Plectins, which are interfilament, in interfilament, in intermediate filament associated protein, help to clip the des desmin with the muscle uh, sarcomere. So plectins are I IFAPs actually. So this whole this helps in muscle contraction and especially the forced construction contraction. And it also helps the muscles from damages. So this was an overview of intermediate filaments and physiologically what are the usage and what are their functions. So in next video about intermediate filaments, I would be talking real details about their functionality and the mechanisms. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you.